The examination of the head and neck patient in the trauma setting should begin with an examination of the C-spine. The C-spine should be palpated in the midline, looking for any tenderness, and the patient should then be asked to look up and look down and then to the left and then to the right and any restriction or pain on movement should carry with it a high index of suspicion for a C-spine injury. And the examination then moves on to the examination of the skull, looking for any lumps or bumps, any step deformity or any obvious bleeding points. Battle sign is then examined for, and this is a clinical picture of battle sign which, with bilateral panda eyes and possible CSF leak, should carry with it a high index of suspicion for a basis skull fracture. The patient should also be examined for a possible retrobulbar hemorrhage, and this is covered in the later section on this DVD. An ear examination is now performed, looking for any obvious signs of CSF leak, any blood in the canal, or any haematympanum. The examination then proceeds to an examination of the trigeminal nerve, looking for any altered sensation across its three divisions. The seventh cranial nerve is then examined, looking for any weakness of the, of the muscles of facial expression. The frontal bone is then palpated, looking for any obvious steps. The supraorbital margin is also palpated. And the zygomatico frontal suture is also palpated, looking for any tenderness or steps. And this may continue to an examination of the orbital rim and then the nasal bones. The infraorbital rim is then palpated, looking for any steps, as is the zygomatic arch. A nasal examination is then performed, looking for any nasal septal deviation or septal hematoma. Ocular motility is then examined, looking for even movement of both eyes in all directions. Restriction of eye movement may be a sign of an orbital floor fracture. A subconjunctival hemorrhage with no posterior limit is in keeping with the zygomatica complex fracture. However, a subconjunctival hemorrhage with a posterior limit may be a sign of of a penetrating eye injury. Pupillary reaction to light is tested next, both in a direct and indirect manner. A swinging light torch test may also be used. The patient's occlusion should then next be checked, and then the patient asked to open wide to see if there's any TMJ tenderness. A maxillary examination is performed first looking for any obvious steps, bleeding points or mobility. A mandibular examination is also performed, feeling for any steps, tenderness or deviation. Condylar restriction is tested for next by asking the patient to move left or right with their jaw and this may be an indication of restriction across a depressed zygomatic fracture. The patient should be examined for any neck swellings or tracheal deviation.